If you are struggling to decide the design parameters for the steel building, then you should go through this video in full. If you are going to cover the design parameters like LZ, LY, LX, KZ, KY and KX for steel design or in simple words, we are going to demystify the art of deciding the effective length parameters in StatPro software. Hello all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Parshit Jain. I am a structural engineer focused on creating contents that would help fellow civil or structural engineers to work efficiently and productively. With this said, let's get back to the video. As we always do, I am going to split this video into three sessions. First one would be explaining the stat parameters and secondly the codal references and finally the application of the parameters in the actual model. So moving to the first part which is stat parameters. What are these parameters? If you see the description of the parameters like LZ, LY and LX, we could see that LZ and LY are the effective length for the slenderness ratio calculation along Z and Y axis respectively. And LX is the effective length for the lateral torsion buckling. It does not make much sense, right? I am getting your thoughts. To get better clarity, we need to answer one more question. Where do we use these parameters? This could make sense. But before moving to that, we need to answer one more question, which is what are the limit states for the beam column? So listing out the limit states. First one would be the buckling of member along major and minor axis. Next a shear failure of a member, a bending failure of a member along major and minor axis, lateral torsional buckling, web buckling or web crippling, tensile yielding and rupture of the member. Now we need to answer the next question which is which of these limit states require an effective length to arrive the capacity of the member. To begin from the start which is the buckling of the member. Obviously, it requires the length parameter because we all know that shorter members behave well with buckling and as the member length increases, the, bu the buckling would become a predominant mode of failure. Next, the shear. It totally depends on the cross section of the member and it does not have anything to do with the effective length. So like uh, shear failure is out. Then the bending failure. If you see the equation to determine the bending capacity of the member which is laterally supported, it does not, it does not involve any length parameters. Then uh, lateral torsional buckling or simply LTB. It definitely will involve uh, length. LTB is nothing more than a buckling of the compression flange in the lateral direction. And to prove the concept of LTB within few seconds is not possible as it may go beyond the scope of this video. But will make a special video for LTB soon. For now, LTB require an effective length parameter. Next, web buckling and web crippling. Again, it is a local failure and it does not involve any length parameter. Then finally, tensile yielding and rupture. It depends on the cross section of the member and the length parameter has nothing to do with that. So, as we discussed, the buckling of the member and the LTB are the two limit states which uses the effective length. Now we need to dig a little deeper into these limit states so that we understand what should be the value which we need. If we get our hands on class 7.1.2.1 of IS 800, we require effective length KL to determine the oilless buckling stress which in turn is used to determine the compressive strength of the member about major and minor axis. Similarly, if you get to see class 8.2.2.1, we actually require effective length for lateral torsional buckling to determine buckling moment. 
विच लीड्स टू डिजाइन बेंडिंग स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द मेम्बर अगेंस्ट लेटर टॉसन बकलेट नाउ वी नो द आंसर फॉर द क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ दिस लिमिट स्टेट्स रिक्वायर एन एफेक्टिव लेंथ एंड एज वेल एज वेर डू वी यूज दीज पैरामीटर्स नाउ मूविंग टू द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ अ वीडियो विच इज द कोडल रेफरेंस Considering our first limit state, buckling strength of a member, we need to seek our effective length of the compression member from table eleven, which is this one, and we have our interest in three of these conditions, like these two, these two one, and then this one. First one is where bottom is pinned. and top is free for translation but rotation is time secondly when the bottom is fixed and top is free for translation and rotation is time and finally one end fixed and the other end free we could get the corresponding eff effective length factor k from the table so like the value before the l which is called k that is our kz and the length l in the unsupported length of a compression member so it is stated over here this l is nothing but the unsupported length of the compression member the reason why i picked these is that if you are working on pb string structure all the columns will would fall under one of these three conditions the table level is for buckling length factors then what would be the factor for ltb As per class 8.3.1 of IS 800 2007, the effective length for LTP of a simply supported member should be equal to 1.2 times the length of the relevant segment in between the lateral restraint. And for other restraint condition, table 15 should be referred. That's okay. So all we need to do now is to determine the unsupported length of a member for all these three cases. So. this leads to our step 3 application of the design parameter let us take an example of this particular building the first and foremost information that we require to determine unsupported length is knowing the sheeting condition of a building so from the image i see like it is fully cladded it means we we don't have any brick wall the building is fully sheeted for this frame what would be the height of brick wall and from which point the sheeting starts so like the sheeting is starting from the base itself then like my condition is full height sheeting let's proceed and determine the parameters for the column let us choose this one this particular column or this one so the k is a parameter considering the column is pinned at the bottom and free to translate at the top the kz value is 2 as per table 11 and then moving on to the l is it so what is the unsupported length of this particular column if we consider the local axis of a member then this is my the vertical direction is my x direction and the direction perpendicular to it this is my y direction and the another direction along the girds is my z direction since we are concerned about the unsupported length on the z axis we need to see is there any firm support that would resist the member from buckling about z axis that means in order to resist the member buckling along z axis we need something some member which is tied to a firm support in the y axis so either like i should be having some horizontal member here which is getting connected to a very stiff column or a stiff rcc support in that case that can be considered as a unsupported length so like uh, that particular member divide divides this column into two segments right now we don't have any such horizontal members here so for this case my l is it is full length next moving to the ky parameter for the same column the base is pinned and we need to check whether there are any intermediate supports in order to resist the minor axis buckling of the member we would require a support in the z axis so like uh, this is my y axis 
if my member is going to buckle buckle along y axis then like it has to move something like this and the members which are running along the z direction won't allow my member to buckle in that way fortunately we have our wall girds running along that direction so each girt position would be acting like some some sort of support provided they are connected to a well braced frame so if take the support condition the column is pinned and each girt position act as a pinned support as well so the ky factor is 1 so like it is pinned pinned condition so it is 1 as per table 11 now moving on to the ly parameter the unsupported length would be the maximum length between the intermediate support so like if i'm having a girt at a spacing of 1.5 meter then my unsupported length would be 1.5 meter here that is our ly next we have kx parameter it is similar to ky parameter and like the intermediate supports would be any member which is running along y direction y direction or z direction right in our frame we don't have any members along uh, is y direction but we have members along z direction these members could act as an intermediate support considering like it is connected to a firm a uh, well braced frame so our kx would be like it is pinned pinned condition then our kx is 1 and then moving on to the effective length we know that from the class 8.3.1 the value of lx would be 1.2 times the unbraced length so considering our girt spacing as 1.5 meter our lx would be 1.2 times 1.5 which would be 1.8 and that's our lx this same procedure applies for rafters as well this is x y and this is our z direction so we don't have anything on the y direction so my lz would be from here to here this is my lz for the rafter and regarding ly we have our purlins along the z direction so the spacing of purlins would be my ly and lx would be 1.2 times the spacing of purlin and that is how we determine our effective lens If you find any difficulties or specific condition that is hard for you to determine the effective length parameters you can reach me out in the comment section hope you gain what you were looking for if you want to learn more about steel buildings watch the videos which are recommended at the end screen and if you like this video give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my new videos until then it's bye from parshit jain